This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Alarming, terrifying developments are taking place in the United States, and I wonder whether you have heard about them. Let me begin by reading an article from Fox News dated June 14. The House of Representatives passed a measure on Friday automatically registering men aged 18 to 26 for selective service. But it has not been invoked in over half a century. It is mandatory for all male U.S. citizens to register for the selective service, also known as the military draft, when they turn 18. Failure to register is classified as a felony and comes with a host of legal challenges. The amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act, NDAA, passed the House in a 217 to 199 vote, but it is unlikely to be taken up by the Senate. Now, the Democrats are not opposed to this law. As we will see, they in fact introduced it. Now, they don't want to necessarily agree to that amendment for other reasons. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer put it this way, Unsurprisingly, the legislation coming out of the House today is loaded with anti-LGBTQ, anti-choice, anti-environment, and other divisive amendments guaranteed not to pass the Senate. As we move forward with this year's NDAA process, both sides will have to work together to pass bipartisan legislation that honors and respects all who serve in defense of our nation. Notice, in defense of our nation. Unfortunately, it goes much further than that. And as I said in the introduction, these are frightening developments. As we have suggested for years, the draft will return. But it might even include many more people than previously anticipated. The Ron Paul Institute published on June 14 an article by Dennis John Kushinich, or Kushinich, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Kushinich was a U.S. representative from Ohio from 1997 to 2013. He was also a candidate for the Democratic nomination for President of the United States in 2004 and 2008, and he is seeking re-election to the House of Representatives in November. And that is what he wrote. Our government is planning a big draft, conscripting millions of young Americans for an even bigger war. I call to your attention a democratic amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act, which was slipped into the almost trillion dollar Pentagon war spending bill by voice vote in the House Armed Services Committee. The Democrat amendments read, Every male citizen of the United States and every other male person residing in the United States between the ages of 18 and 26 shall be automatically registered under this act by the director of the Selective Service System. He goes on to say there is no other conceivable reason to require more than 16 million American males to be automatically registered for the draft, other than to prepare for a large-scale war. Selective Service will notify in writing every young American male that they have been registered and will prescribe regulations which can require the registrant to provide date of birth, address, social security account number, phone number, email address, etc., etc., etc. There are members of Congress who advocate that young women also be included in any draft, which could bring to 32 million the number of Americans of draft eligible age. The U.S. currently has over 1,300,000 men and women, career soldiers, as well as volunteers, serving in the all-volunteer armed forces. According to the new automatic draft law, undocumented immigrants between the ages of 18 and 26 numbering at least 1.5 million, could also be conscripted 
if it were to apply to women as well as men. The last time a draft was instituted in the United States was during the Vietnam War, when 1.9 million Americans were conscripted. Resistance does occur during a draft. During the Vietnam War, an estimated 60% of all draft-eligible young men found a means to avoid getting conscripted, including a future president by the name of Bill Clinton. Some, fearful for their lives, fled to Canada or Sweden. The Vietnam War ripped apart the country. The protests over the war, fueled by compulsory service and rising casualties of U.S. troops, led President Johnson to decide, in 1968, not to run for re-election. The draft was ended in 1973 and was reinstated by President Carter in 1980. The connection between automatically registering men and perhaps women for selective service, reinstating the draft, and preparing for global war should be very obvious to all of us. On June 18, Caitlin Jonestone, who is a journalist from Melbourne, Australia, wrote the following. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said on Friday, Today we have 500,000 troops at high residence and readiness across all domains, significantly more than the goal of 300,000 troops that was set at the 2022 Madrid summit. This comes as we learn from Stoltenberg that NATO is considering increasing the number of nuclear weapons it has on standby, meaning ready to use in a nuclear war. This is happening at the same time U.S. lawmakers are working to expand draft registration to women and to automate registration for men. The draft is one of those things that gets more disgusting the more you think about it. Go fight and kill and die for your country. This is evil, this is ugly, and it needs to stop. And the good news is it will stop. But it won't stop as long as man rules over man. It will stop when Jesus Christ returns to put an end to this madness. He is telling us a nuclear war is coming, a worldwide global nuclear war, and unless he were to return and to make an end by stopping this madness, no flesh, nobody would survive. The Associated Press wrote on June 17, the world's nine nuclear armed states continue to modernize their nuclear weapons as the countries deepen their reliance on such deference in 2023. We have not seen nuclear weapons playing such a prominent role in international relations since the World War, I mean the Cold War. And so it goes on to say that the US share of total spending on nuclear weapons in 2023 $51.5 billion is more than all the other nuclear armed countries put together. It is estimated that some 2,100 of the deployed warheads were kept in a state of high operational alert on ballistic missiles, and nearly all belong to Russia and the United States. Russia and the United States have together almost 90% of all nuclear weapons. And to produce and to rely on nuclear weapons, which are capable of annihilating all life on Earth many times over, is simply the epitome of utter insanity. You see, when I came in contact with the Church of God many, many years ago, in 1969, when I was still a young student, one of the things which deeply impressed me was the Church's uncompromising stance on military service and war. And the more I studied into this, the more I became convinced and convicted that it is wrong, that it is evil to become a participant in these wars which are being fought and which are going to be fought very soon. 
And literally after decades of additional research, we produced a booklet, Should You Fight in War? And I like to say it's a free booklet, free for the asking. You will never have read anything quite like this. This booklet goes into the history of the true church. It goes into the scriptures of the Bible showing you what Christ demands of you. And of course, it goes into all the arguments which you have heard time and again why it is right for people to serve in the military in a combatant situation and to go and fight in war, because that's the patriotic duty of everyone to do that. Please ask for a free copy of this booklet, because your decisions today will have probably the greatest influence on what is going to happen to you in the future. Because the time will come when you will stand in front of the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. And then Christ will ask you perhaps the following questions. Have you never read that I told Peter, put your sword away, because whoever takes the sword shall perish by the sword? Have you never read the prophecies about the millennium in the book of Isaiah, when people will replace their weapons of destruction and war and mass destruction with usable, productive tools of agriculture, and that they will learn war no more. Didn't this tell you something? And then what is your answer going to be? Yes, yeah, I read these things, I heard about these things, but I decided that my patriotic duty for fighting and killing and dying for my country was more important than what you had to say in your word. Or will you say, no, I read these things, and because of that, I became a conscientious objector, refusing to serve in the military, and absolutely refusing to fight in war. And if you say that, then Jesus Christ will tell you, well done, my good and my faithful servant. So please, ask for a free copy of this booklet. And until next time, this is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.